Hello and welcome to the recorded version of our Worship Live Mother's Day edition. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I pray it will be a blessing to you and a blessing to your family. First off, I want to start out by saying again, Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there and for everything you do, not just today, but every day, to take care of your families and to pray for them, to love them, and to guide them each and every day. Know that you are loved and you are appreciated for everything that you do. And I thank the good Lord for all of the mothers. So happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. This morning we did a live video uh, very quickly uh, because we were unable to come to you live from here at the studio. And so we did a quick live video uh, speaking about mothers and about how important raising your family is and how important it is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to a world that desperately needs him. And this morning, I want to share some verses with you. Uh, first one will be uh, from John chapter 19 and verse 25. Now, we'll be talking about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. But in this verse, I want you to listen to this. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. Now, I want to look at that first part of the verse. It says, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother. You know, that paints a very vivid picture. That when we talk about mothers and the commitment to their children and the commitment to their families, this stands out to me. Jesus Christ was being crucified at a cross at Calvary for my sin and for yours. And his mother never left his side. His mother, through the hardest part of his life, his human life, was there. She never left him. She never left him alone. She never turned her back on him. She never walked away. I want you to think about the mother in your life, whether you are still blessed to have her or she's sadly already passed on. I want you to think of all the times in your life that you went through some hard moments and your mother was still there. Your mother still cared about you. She cried when you cried. She hurt when you hurt. She was happy when you were happy. And she was your biggest cheerleader and your greatest fan. Through thick and thin, through good and bad, she was always there. You know, I lost my mom almost two years ago, this August to be two years. And I miss her every day. My mom didn't always agree with the lifestyle that I lived. When I turned away from the church and I turned away from God and I got into partying and drinking and doing drugs, my mom didn't agree with my lifestyle. But she loved me unconditionally. She never stopped praying for me. She never gave up on me. Why? Because she loved me. She did everything that she could in the life of of my sister and myself to give us a great life. And you know, there's times that I didn't always agree with my mom. But you know what? Don't let petty differences keep you from the blessings that God has given you. I said that this morning. That when it comes to, excuse me, our Christian lives, we need, we need to not let things sidetrack us from the blessings that God has given us. You know, whatever argument that maybe you got into with your parents or whatever argument you got into with your brother or your sister, whatever argument you got into with your, your fellow church member, your friend, your whatever it is, co-worker. Look, guys, we are blessed today. And we need to not let the devil blind us with mediocre, meaningless things that should not blind us from our blessings that God has given us. If you're able to still have your mother today, call her. Tell her how much you love her. Tell her how much she means to you and how thankful you are for everything that she did for you. Don't wait until it's too late. Don't look back on your life and say, I wish I would have told her how much I cared, how much I loved her, how much I respected her, how much I appreciated her in my life. Because guys, hear me. Your mother would love to hear those words from you. 
And I know Father's Day is coming up in June. But we need to love our parents. Our mothers and our fathers have done without so that we could have what we need in our lives. They have prayed for us. They have cried for us. They have dreamed for us. They have hoped for us. Love them. You know, I heard a song one time on the radio that said, Love the one, the ones God gave you. Because one day, He's going to want them back. I praise the good Lord today that the promise of eternal life, my mom is living that right now. And as much as I miss her and as much as I love her, I wouldn't, for anything in this world, ask her to come back even if I could. Because she's safe with Jesus Christ. She's with the one that she dedicated her life to. She's with the one that she prayed that her kids would follow. She's with the one that she worshipped and praised in church. She's with the one that brought her through every hardship in her life. Every prayer that she ever prayed, she's with the one that answered those prayers. She's with the one that even in her health issues at the end of her life, she still had a smile on her face when she talked about Jesus Christ. My mom is with the one who died for her. She's in glory. She's pain free. And one day, thank the good Lord, I'm going to see her again. And because of the prayers of my mama, I'm where I'm at today. My mama and Jesus Christ never gave up on me. They never turned their back on me. They never said no. My mom prayed. And God listened. And I'm where I'm at today because of a love of a Savior and a love of my mom. And I thank the Lord for those that he's given me. I'm thankful for the blessings in my life. This morning, don't take anything for granted. Every day is a blessing. I know right now we're going through some hard times in this life. And I know and I promise you it's going to get better. I don't know when it will get better, but I'm trusting God because I know he's got it all under control and everything in the end is going to work out. But church, all of us, not just our church, but every church, we need to pray for those who are hurting right now. We need to pray for those families that are out of work, that don't know how they're going to take care of their families. We need to pray that God will give them hope and God will give them strength. And God will give them the needs that they desire. And that he'll answer prayer. And that he'll guide and lead and direct our governmental, government officials to make the right choices that's going to help people. You know, we talked a little bit uh, this morning about how children seemingly today are just thrown away. You know, the numbers of abortions, uh, if it doesn't bother you, it should. At how many children are just thrown out by the very people that should have loved them. They were treated as a mistake instead of a blessing. And they were thrown away. Let me tell you something. Shame on America. I'm just going to say it. Shame on America. Churches, I'm going to say the same thing about us. We need to stand up. And we need to stand up against people throwing away children as if they're just nothing. We need to stand up for what's right. We need to stand up for God's word. God has not forgotten what we have done as a nation. And we need to get on our face before God and say, God, forgive us where we have failed horribly. We've let down generation upon generation of children. And it doesn't even seem to bother us. And that's wrong. I don't care how you try to label it. God's word says, God said, I knew you before you were even in the womb. Before you were formed in the womb, 
I knew you. God had a purpose and a plan for each and every one of those children over the years that had been thrown away as if they were trash. God had a purpose for them. And we as a nation and as a world stole it away from them. That is shameful, not only on America, but on each and every one of us that stood idly by and said nothing. And that needs to stop now. We, as believers in Jesus Christ, bought by the blood that was shed at a place called Calvary, needs to stand up for those who cannot have a voice and say, we're not going to stand by any longer. We need to be the church that's bought by the blood of Jesus Christ and led by God's word. We need to do what's right. Because I can promise you if we don't, we're going to stand before God one day and give an account for what we should have done and we didn't. We need to have that in our heart that says, I am not okay with what's going on. I'm not okay with the direction this world's going. I'm not okay just sitting on the sidelines and not saying what thus saith the word of God. I'm not okay just sitting by watching people die and go to hell. I'm not okay with just being a mediocre Christian that does nothing more than sit in a church pew. I'm going to make changes today. I'm going to stand up and do what's right. Our mothers and our fathers did what was right in their generation. And it's time that we pick it up and do what's right in ours. Because guys, hear me. Jesus Christ is watching. The only question I have for us is this. What's he going to see? Is he going to see people that are standing up for what's right? Or is he going to see people idly just sitting by? It's a choice only you and I can make. You know, in John chapter 20 and verse 11, it says, But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. Mary loved Jesus Christ. She loved him. And even in his death, she was there. In his resurrection, she was there. And when she heard his voice, she knew he was alive. If we look at Mary's life and her relationship with Jesus Christ, we could find... <coughs> Excuse me. We could find a blueprint plan of the kind of relationship we need to have with Jesus Christ in our own personal lives. We need to have that kind of relationship that sticks with God, stays with Him. When life gets hard, we're right there. When life is easy, we're right there. When things don't go as we thought they should have, we're still right there. And when Jesus Christ speaks, we know his voice. Why? Because we are committed and we are in love with Jesus Christ. This morning, I leave you with this. Be thankful for your parents. Be thankful for those who took the time in their life to raise you the best way they knew how. Be thankful for the ones in your life that still pray for you. Be thankful for the ones in your life that love you, that care about you. That do what they can to make sure you're safe and taken care of. Be thankful for the ones that God gave you. Because one day, he's going to want them back. I recorded a song last night. The reason uh, I won't sing it live uh, on this video is because I don't have my tablet with me. Uh, it is being used uh, for another purpose. Uh, but I'm going to play you the clip that I recorded uh, last night. And I want you to listen to it. It's a song 
called I'd Rather Have Jesus. And I tell you what, it's a blessing. I hope it blesses your heart. And believe me, we all need Jesus Christ. I'll be back with you in just a few moments. Rather had Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches untold. I'd rather had Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather be led by his name pierced hands than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread. rather had Jesus than anything this world affords today. I rather had Jesus than man's applause. I rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. Oh, I'd rather be true to his holy name than to Or be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Than this old world of force today. All right, I hope that blessed your heart uh, as you watched that. I'd rather have Jesus. You know what? I would rather have Jesus than anything else in this world. Jesus has been so good to me and so good to my family. I get excited when I think about all the blessings that Jesus has given me in my life that I absolutely did not deserve. And first and foremost, when he died at a place in Calvary, he took my cross, he took my sin, he took my nails, and he died in my place. And I'm thankful this morning for a Savior that loved me enough, that thought enough about me when I could have cared less about myself or even cared about him. And he died for me so that I could have a hope of eternal life. When I came to the foot of the cross and I asked Jesus to forgive me and to save me and to come into my heart, he did exactly that. He didn't turn his back on me. He didn't turn away from me. And he did not give up on me. And even to this day when I fail him and I fall and I sin and I do and I come to the cross and I ask Jesus to forgive me, he opens his arms with love and forgives me of my sins. I'm thankful for that this morning. I hope that you're thankful for that this morning as well. You know, God has been so good. He has been so good, as we say in our church services, God is good all the time. He absolutely is. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I pray it has blessed you. It has spoken to your heart. 
I pray that God's word has ministered to you. And before we go, I just want to share with you again uh, about the our daily bread. What we do is we have these in our church's welcome center, and they're free of charge for anybody to take. I have 25 of them available, and these are for the months of June, July, and August. And on the inside, if you're unfamiliar with our daily bread, I just want to give this to you again. It goes day by day on the inside of this, uh, starting with June 1st on this side, and then continuing through June, July, and August. It has uh, scripture reading, daily scripture reading. Uh, it has a short story or an application for your day. And it also has some qu a question at the bottom on how to uh, use God's word and apply it to your daily life for each day. And it will be a blessing to you. And if you would like to have a copy of Our Daily Bread, I want you to email me at don, D-O-N, Heider, H-Y-D-E-R, H-D, at gmail.com. And give me your name, your address, and your zip code. And I'll get these the, one of these right out in the mail to you as soon as possible. And I know it'll bless you and it'll help you in your daily walk with Jesus Christ and your daily scripture reading of God's word. And so just if you would like one of these, just email that to me. I'll have the emails uh, in the post and also in the comment, the email address, so you'll be able to find it. Also, remember, uh, I just want to run a few things past you. Remember our podcast, weekly podcast, The Weekend Word. It's available every Saturday, and you can find that on our church's website at adrianffwb.org. Click on the podcast uh, button, and you'll be able to download uh, all five episodes, so check those out. Also remember, every Saturday evening at 6 here on Facebook Live, uh, we have our Saturday prayer service. And so come and be with us. I know that'll be a blessing to you. It's a blessing to each and every one of us to be able to gather together and lift our needs up to Jesus Christ in prayer. Also, we attempt to, every Sunday, go live at at least 11 o'clock. If not, we try again at 1. If we're not able to like we were not able to today, then we do a recorded video like we have done right now and have that available both on our Facebook page, Adrian FFWB, all one word, and on our YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash Adrian FFWB. Thank you so much again for being with me and for watching this video. And I'll tell you what, know this, we're in this together. I love you. I'm praying for you. And again, to all the mothers, happy Mother's Day. I hope you are blessed and I hope you are well. Know that you are loved and appreciated. As always, God bless you. Have a great rest of your day.